Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and it is wrap up time. It is time to say goodbye to the month of April and hello to the month of May. So in the month of April, I participated in the Owl's Magical Readathon, which is a month long readathon based on Harry Potter, where you pick a career and take classes based on that career. And once you finish those books, you pass that owl. And if you pass all of your owls, then you become that career. Well, you get one step closer because there are the newts in August. This was my first year participating and I had a lot of fun doing it. I did end up completing my owls and I ended up completing actually all the prompts except for one because none of the books that I read happened to have a bird on the cover. So I was just like, okay, oops. So I figured the easiest way to do this is to go through the books that I read for my owls first and talk about those and then talk about the ones that are left over after which means that this wrap up isn't going to be in the order that I read them it's just going to be like in the order that I see them on the sheet so yes my goal for this month to become a seer I had to pass Ancient Runes, Arithmancy, Astronomy, Divination, Herbology, Potions, and Transfiguration. I had to pass those to become a seer and to do the extra seminars I wanted to do. That ended up being seven books and that was my goal. And honestly, I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to do that. But I ended up doing that and my official count for the number of books that I read in April is... 15. So I read 15 books in the month of April, which is the most books I've ever read in a month. And I'm very impressed and proud of myself that I managed to do that. So so this means that I am a seer and when I take the newts in August, I can take my newts from the seer and then be that career. So the first class is Ancient Runes. And for that, you had to read a book with a heart on the cover or in the title. So for that, I read Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Osman, and I had heard just ravings about this book, endless good things, and it did not disappoint. This is the second graphic novel I have read, because I did read Fence before this, but this is my favorite so far, and it's made me want to read more and explore that type of storytelling more. Um, I ended up giving this book a 5 out of 5 stars. It was well deserved. This book is adorable and just the relationship between the two boys is just the cutest thing ever and it just will fill you up inside and make you feel happy. So this is honestly a really good thing to read now if you want something to make you happier. This book left me feeling all warm and fuzzy. So. I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend this book, especially if you're just trying to like get into comic books, then this is definitely a good place to start. I don't have too, too much to say other than the fact that it was just so cute. Um, and just, they're just, their story is so precious. So with that, I passed Ancient Runes, um, and then I had to take Arithmancy, which is Magical Qualities of Number Two, Balance and Opposites, read something outside your favorite genre. So for this, I read A Court of Mist and Fury because I don't typically read fantasy. Um, so that is out of genre for me. And I wanted to read the next one because I had read A Court of Thorns and Roses the month before. So it was time to continue. As you can see, I annotated this book a lot. It is very well loved. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed it because I enjoyed the recent Feyre storyline. Um, I did post a like full review of the first two books on my channel, so you can go check those out if you want to hear more of my thoughts on this. Um, I did give this book a 5 out of 5 stars, which I was pleasantly surprised with because usually Sarah J. Mass's writing just like leaves, leaves something to be desired for me um, and I, like, I find it hard to read sometimes, but this was great. I loved it. I loved just recent Farrah's relationship in this, but also like Farrah's development as a character I really really enjoyed and sort of like coming out from like her past traumas and abuses and like becoming her own person um, was I thought was really really enjoyable. So yes, I'm not gonna say anymore because I have talked about this endlessly on my channel, but 
if you want to go check out, like if you want to hear me say more, you can go check out like the full review of it. And then I had to take astronomy, which is night classes, read the majority of this book when it's dark outside. I ended up using Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Osman because if this was a really quick read and I sat down and I read it at night, so I was like, alright, I'm gonna count it. And this is obviously just a continuation of what happens in book one, so I'm not gonna say a lot about it in case you haven't read it, but this is just like the second part of their story. And there is a third one that I do own but haven't read quite yet. I also gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. How great it is that we're starting out with five star reads, but I also gave this book a five out of five stars. Um, so I just really, really love the story, and it's definitely my favorite graphic novel that I've read so far. So I'm excited for the third one and to see how it ends. So and then the next one on this list would have been Care of Magical Creatures, which is to read a book with a beak on the cover. But I do not think any of the 15 books I read happen to have a beak on the cover, which kind of stinks. But you know, what are you gonna do? So we're going to skip to Charms, which was Lumos Maxima, which was a white cover. For that one, I read The Flat Chair by Beth O'Leary. Um, I had heard like so many good things about this book. Everyone was reading it, so I kind of wanted to see what the hype was about. And the concept seemed really interesting of, you know, two people like bonding in a flat. But the execution was not good. I gave this book a 1 out of 5 stars. I did not enjoy it at all and I was so disappointed that I didn't enjoy it because I thought that it would be right up my alley but I really just didn't enjoy it at all. I just think, first of all, the formatting of the book was completely wrong. The dialogue was not formatted correctly. Um, it was like stage dialogue, like it was a play, it wasn't like a novel and that really bothered me as a writer because that's just not correct and I don't understand why that didn't get fixed. Um, so that was kind of hard for me to get past and then there was also so many grammatical errors in that book. I don't know, it's just they just like changed tense of a lot and there's, there was a lot of grammatical and formatting errors that were really hard for me to see past but I did read the whole book because I wanted to give it a fair shot because I really was rooting for it to get better it just didn't. Um, another thing I had an issue with was the abusive slash stalker ex-boyfriend storyline because the way it was executed was not realistic and this is speaking as someone who was stalked by an ex-boyfriend so I have been through it and the way it was represented was just totally wrong, unrealistic, and honestly kind of offensive and insulting um, and it just I don't know what else to say, it just angered me because like, I was just like, that's not how it happens. Um, and I just think it had the potential to like be a really good book and it just wasn't. Um, I know this is like kind of an unpopular opinion, I think. I mean, I haven't seen everyone's reviews, but a lot of people really like it. But for me, there were just like so many issues in it that I just couldn't get past. Um, the love story was like, yeah, I guess it's cute, but like, it really wasn't that interesting. It wasn't like the best thing I've ever read. You can only like read people leaving sticky notes to each other so many times before it gets really repetitive. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just... It was a one star read for me. I really didn't enjoy it and I thought there were a lot of things wrong with it personally. So with that I passed my Charms Owl and then I would move on to Defense Against the Dark Arts which was Grindelow's, a book set at the sea or the coast. And for this one, I chose to read With Malice by Eileen Cook, and this is a thriller about a girl who went on a trip to Italy and she wakes up in the hospital with no memory of the trip at all, and then she finds out that her best friend died on the trip in a car accident that she caused, that she was the driver, but she doesn't remember it, and she's being like prosecuted and like charged and investigated for murdering her best friend but she has no memory of what happened so just the entire story is just her trying to remember what happened and the whole time you're trying to guess whether she actually did it or not um this was a really fun read for me i gave it a four out of five stars um it was definitely worth the read it's i think it's the only thriller i've really ever read if it's not the only thriller it's definitely the best thriller i've ever read and my review of it is literally, I'm shook. That's all I have to say. So there is a twist at the end that I really enjoyed. 
so I would definitely recommend picking this one up if you want like a quick addicting like thriller read I would recommend that one I figured this could work for set at sea the slash the coast because the cover is like Italy and some of it's set in Italy which is literally like on the sea so it might be a stretch but I used it for that then the next owl was Divination, Third Eye, Assign Numbers to your TBR and use a random number generator to pick your read. I wound up with To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. Um, I have seen the movie, so I'm reading this after having seen the movie, and it was a very interesting time to read it after that to see, like, in a, like, in a lot of ways it is really similar but there were like some scenes that were done way differently and i was just surprised that the movie like took the liberty to do them in that way um that being said i did really enjoy it i'm not surprised that i enjoyed it because i enjoyed the movie and i like love stories um i ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars it wasn't quite a 5 star for, read for me um i think maybe because i saw the movie i think if I had been reading it for the first time and didn't know what was going to happen, maybe it would have been five stars, but that's hard to say because, you know, I read it when I read it, but I did really enjoy it and I will be picking up the second one at some point and I'm interested to see how they do the second one because I have seen the second movie, um, so I'm interested to see sort of how that pans out. Um, there weren't really any major surprises in the book from the movie. I mean, there was, it was a pretty good book to movie adaptation, I think, as they go. I think everyone pretty much knows what this is about, but if you don't, um, basically Laura Jean is the main character and she writes a letter to every boy she's ever loved, but they're, she, like, she addresses them with some and everything, but then she hides them away in her room and it's essentially her way of like cleaning out her mind and being like okay i wrote my feelings down on a letter and now i don't have to feel them anymore but then somehow her letters get mailed out so all the boys she's loved before <laughs> get the letters and you know all hell breaks loose so that is what that's about it is definitely a really fun read and i would recommend either or like you can do both or just do one whatever um watching the movie reading the book or doing both because i enjoyed both of them so i would definitely recommend it so after that i had herbology which is nimbulus nimbletoza which is title starts with an m for this i read the merciful crow by margaret owen which is a book that i got in a fairy loot box um but i had been wanting to give a try because i hadn't heard really anything about it i ended up giving this book a three out of five stars because it was just eh, it was average like it wasn't bad but it wasn't like great um, it was pretty forgettable, like I don't think about it a lot and I'll like never reread it mostly. Um, basically, it's about this fantasy world that has a caste system where they use like types of birds kind of, um, and the crows are the bottom of the cast and they collect the dead bodies of people who have like died from the plague. And it is about sort of the main girl is a crow, I forget her name. Um, Fee is her name, and she gets roped into helping the prince and his, like, guard run away from the castle because there was, like, an attempt on his life, um, and she's trying to get them basically from point A to point B, and that's pretty much all that happens in the book. Um, it's a lot of just, like, wandering through the woods, I guess. It wasn't that interesting. I thought the magic system was, like, kind of cool but it wasn't really that interesting. I feel like it could have been a lot better than it was. It just kind of felt like every other thing I've ever read, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, and it was just like, I, don't, I just didn't like get into it. I never really like was invested in it. I was just kind of like reading it because I was like, oh, okay. I like never got to the point where I like couldn't put it down and wanted to pick it up again, which I think is, I don't know, kind of important when you read, so it was just like an average book for me. After that, we have History of Magic, which is Witch Hunts, a book featuring witches or wizards. And for this, I read Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. I count Magnus for the witches or wizards, cock-off warlock, um, that's in this book, because 
you know, I wanted to read this book and I'm going to count it for that. Um, I tabbed the heck out of this because I loved it. I have yet, to, I, this is my first read of this, of this series. I think that's important to mention because I have obviously read Mortal Instruments, but I've never read Infernal Devices before. I don't really know what was taking me so long, but I finally did it and got there. And I gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars. And I know what you're thinking. It's like, come on, Cassie, you're being really hard on this book. And you know what? I am because I feel like it's going to get better. So I feel like 4.75 stars is right. I feel like it's not quite a 5 stars. It needs that little 0.5 that I know is going to come from the next book to sort of lift it up and elevate it. Um, but that being said, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, and Tessa Gray is probably my favorite female character in the Shadowhunter Chronicle world right now. I haven't read um, The Dark Artifices and everything or um, her newest book that came out. So, Chain of Gold, there it is. Um, so maybe there's like a girl character in that that I'm gonna love too. But Tessa Gray is a badass and she's awesome. And I love that my man Magnus is in this. And also I love Will and Jem, but I like Jem more than Will because I feel like Will is just a carbon copy of Grace. So I feel like Will is just a co carbon copy of Jace. And I've said this many, many, many times on my channel, um, but I still think it's true. I just feel like they didn't need to be the same exact person just because they were related, but that's just an opinion and it's just as hard for me to picture him as anyone else than Jace, so it just kind of is hard for me sometimes when reading it to like get that into the story but I really enjoyed it I liked the the, the premise of it I liked how it's like a new villain it's not like a shadow hunter doing it it's like like a, a human kind of like human society I'm not gonna give too much away but and that and they have like these robots which I was kind of surprised about I mean maybe I should have guessed with the whole like clockwork thing and like devices but I don't know, I just didn't guess. So when they pull out like, is it auto maidens? Is that what they're called? I don't know. When they pulled those out, I was like, what? But anyways, this is really, really, really amazing. I think I'm gonna do like a full review once I read the whole trilogy. So for now, that's it on this book because I do have a lot to say, but I don't want this whole video to just be about Clockwork Angel. Then I had Muggle Studies, and this is a book from the perspective of a muggle. So basically a contemporary. And for that, I read How to Find Love in a Bookshop by Veronica Henry. I gave this book a two out of five stars. I did not enjoy this book. Um, it's basically about a girl who, I forget her name because I, I read this way at the beginning of the month, but it's about a girl whose father dies and she takes over his bookshop because it's like his legacy and she like meets people and like helps them kind of like with books like she helps them find books and through helping them find books like helps them with their life if that makes sense but my main issue with this book was there were just too many stories going on at once i think there were like five or four or five maybe even six love stories going on at one time and it was just way too difficult to keep track of them all and it also took away from like the other stories and was just hard to get invested because when you're constantly switching from perspective and character to character and they have like really nothing to do with each other except for one like meeting that they had and that's it it just is hard to keep track of it and you just don't really get invested so i just wasn't invested in any of the characters or their stories or their relationship and i just like didn't really care what happened to them which is honestly kind of disappointing because i thought i was gonna like that book but i did not and I do not think I would recommend it. Next one was Potions, which is Shrinking Solution. Read a book under 150 pages. And for that, I read the first novella in the Tales from Shadowhunter Academy bind-up, and that is Welcome to Shadowhunter Academy. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Um, this is basically about Simon and his like time at Shadowhunter Academy and everything. I'm not going to say more about it because I just think it's a kind of a spoiler. But, so that's what that was about, and you kind of get to see more into the Shadowhunter world and sort of what their academy is like, and interest and everything, so it was enjoyable. 
which is why I gave it four stars. I missed Simon. He's such a funny little bean. And you sort of got to see every character at the beginning from the Mortal Instruments series, so it was just nice to like see them again. Um, I don't really have a lot to say about it. I mean, it was like 70 pages, so there's really not a lot to say. But I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was a fun read, and I'll definitely continue slowly making my way through the bind-up. Uh, bind-ups are just taking a long time to get through when it's like a series of short stories because I don't like to switch gears like that. I just want to like stay in one story for a while. I don't like to start a new story like every 70 pages, so that's why it'll probably take me a decently long time. Then the last owl I passed was Transfiguration, which is Animagus Lecture, book or series that includes shapeshifting. And for that I read Wicked Books by Kat Cho. I also got this in a girly box. You can tell by its lovely pink pages and it's signed. This book was amazing. I cannot rant about this enough. I don't think I really have yet. Um, I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. And I am pleasantly surprised because a lot of people were just like bashing this book and saying that it was like really bad, but I loved it. It was so interesting. It's basically about this girl who is a kitsune, which is a sort of like magical fox from Japanese mythology. Um, and she is supposed to feed on men and like their souls to live, otherwise she'll die, but she doesn't want to do that. And it's sort of about her struggle between like what she's supposed to do for her like mom who's also a kitsune and like what she needs to do to survive and who she wants to be and then enter the boy um and their sort of love story together and it was just really really beautiful and just a really really good story and i have not read anything really about japanese mythology so i was so excited to read something that told stories of that and it just I loved it it lived up to the hype is mostly what I have to say um the love story between Myung and Daehoon was adorable and they're just like perfect for each other and it was like kind of like hate to love sort of thing which is like my jam um and Daehoon is a bean who just kind of like stands by her through everything and it's just really cute but also the reactions towards things in this book are really realistic which i liked um like characters the characters reacted in a realistic way that i would react to something like that happened to me so the story itself was just awesome the characters are really cool um yeah i just would really 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 recommend reading this and i will be reading the second one and buying the second one as soon as it comes out I don't think it's out yet, I think it comes out sometime later this year, but this was really amazing and I loved it, so definitely pick it up. So that is it for all of my owl related books. Then additionally, I read Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Monascalo and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I was kind of disappointed because I thought it was going to be like at least a 4 star read, maybe even a 5 star read. I thought I was going to love it because it's history mixed with like mystery and killers and it just seemed like up my alley but I just had a hard time getting into it. The beginning was intriguing, the middle just kind of dragged on but the end like I appreciated the twist at the end um because I did not see it coming and I really like being surprised by books which I've said 20,000 times but um but I was it just took me a while to get into it for whatever reason so I don't know why. But that being said, it was three stars. It was a decently good book. Um, Thomas is great. Thomas Cresswell is great. And I like Audrey as a character. And I will probably pick up the second one because that one is hunting Prince Dracula. And I just read Dracula. So it would be cool to read sort of a retelling of that. So I will definitely pick that one up. Um... And yeah, and see how I like that one. But it's not that I didn't like this, it just wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be, but it was still good. So if you haven't read it, like definitely go read it. But I just think it got too hyped up for me, and I was just expecting something like way different than it was. Oh, and if you don't know the story, because I keep forgetting to say this, um, essentially it's about a girl who works in a sort of like 
I don't want to say like embalmment place. She like works like with the dead bodies to see like their cause of death with her uncle. And which obviously is like taboo and no one can know about that because she's a girl. But um, and this is like in the 1800s. But they like keep getting bodies from Jack the Ripper's victims. So she decides that she is going to go hunt Jack the Ripper and figure out who it is and stop him. Because she's like, I can't let this stand any longer. And it's just her solving the mystery. So it is definitely a fun read. Then I finished My True Love Gave to Me by Stephanie Perkins and a variety of authors. This is just a bind up of a bunch of Christmas holiday stories uh, that I had been reading since like 2015 and I just finished it to get it off my shelf. Um, I gave it a 2.75 out of 5 stars because I enjoyed it for what it was but I just have figured out that I just don't like short story bind ups in general. It's just not my jam and I just get bored of them inevitably and put them down and don't pick them back up. So yeah. So I don't have a lot to say about that. I mean there were some cute stories in there but I just don't think I like that type of setup or format just in general. So then I also read Goddess of the Hunt um, by Tessa Dare and I also gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved that book so much. It was my first Tessa Dare book and I can't believe I hadn't read her before. She is a historical romance adult fiction author and it was just amazing. Um, the story I read, Goddess of the Hunt, is about a girl named Lucy and she has a crush on her brother's friend who is about to be engaged so she decides that she needs to stop his engagement but before she does she needs practice so she turns to her brother's other friend jeremy and all of them have been friends since they were kids um it's like a group her brother has like three guy friends and then it's like her and they've been hanging out since they were little so she turns to jeremy for practice and they hate each other they can't stand each other but of course it is just hate to love romance gold and it was just so amazing i read it in a day and I just like couldn't put it down. I got so into it. So definitely read it. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I think my for my favorite books of the month, that's up there. So definitely, definitely, definitely pick it up. Um, and then just the character of Lucy herself is just very relatable to me. And just Jeremy is the perfect guy and where can I get one is basically what I'm asking. And then on literally the last day of April, I squeaked out one more book because I read Archie Volume 1, which is just an Archie comic. Um, I was, if you watch my last or second to last, I don't know, one of my last videos about things that I am obsessed with, I am on a Riverdale kick right now. So I found one of the comics and I was like, alright, I'm going to read it. And I did, and I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars because it was just so much fun and so enjoyable and so lighthearted. Like, the show is so serious and so, like, murdery, but the comics are just, like, so fluffy and just lighthearted. And it was just a lot of fun to read, and it was fun to see those characters in, like, a different format. Um, I still don't like Veronica. She's even worse in the comic books. She's, like, even more spoiled in the comic books. But everyone else I like. Everyone else was great. Reggie's, like, terrible, but, like, in a funny way. But Veronica, I just, I'm sorry, I just can't, I can't stand comic book Veronica, I'm sorry. I'm sure she might be better in other issues, but in this one she was really annoying. But this was the issue that she like moved to Riverdale, so now she's more annoying in the beginning than she is later. But I just don't like how she treats Archie literally like her lap dog and like a servant and sort of orders him around. She kind of does it in the show too, and I really have never been cool with that, but yeah. So that's my opinion, and those are all of the books I read in the month of April. I think it's hard to pick a favorite book of the month, but I think my favorite book of the month is either between The Court of Mr. Fury, Goddess of the Hunt, and Wicked Fox. I think those three books are probably my top three books. Those are top three. Those are my top three books of this month. This was an incredibly successful and fun reading month for me and The Owls definitely inspired me to read more which is great and amazing and I cannot believe that I finished 15 books because I've never in my life finished 15 books in a month. Usually I do like 7 and this was over twice that so that 
is amazing and I'm super proud of myself for this. So yeah. Can't wait to see what I read this month or next month depending on when you're watching this but I can't wait to see what I read in May and hopefully I have a successful reading month like I did this month. So that is all for today's video. That's all for my wrap up. I hope you enjoyed. Please give me a thumbs up down below if you enjoyed. Comment down below what you thought of these books if you've read them or just any book recommendations you have for me. I'm always looking for recommendations. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content and I will see you guys with the next video. Bye!